Kinkadu trying to stop the tide coming in? The tide? Trying to send it back? Everyone thought he could do everything, but then he got his phone, he sat beside the sea and he commanded it not to come in, and it did. So that proved he couldn't do everything. And got his feet rather wet, as I remember. We all think we know the story of King Canute, but was the legendary Viking leader and 11th century King of England so deluded to really assume he had the powers to turn back the tide? The first written account was in Historia Anglorum, the history of the English people by chronicler Henry of Huntingdon, who lived within 60 years of the death of Canute in 1035 AD. The site is sometimes located at Thorny Island, now Westminster, where Canute set up a royal palace during his reign over London. However, a sign on Southampton City Centre's Canute Road reads, Near this spot, AD 1028, Canute reproved his courtiers. According to the story, the king had his chair carried down to the shore and ordered the waves not to break upon his land. But Southampton's more recent history is a modern view of this medieval myth. The opening of the railway with London in 1840 was the key to the change in Southampton's prosperity. As soon as entrepreneurs realised they could save at least a day's sailing by using the railway to transport their cargo to Southampton and exporting from the port, marshland that was formerly only fit for seagulls was worth a premium for development when reclaimed from the sea. One dock after another, including dry docks, were built during the reign of Queen Victoria. The first dock was inaugurated in 1843 and became known as the Outer Dock, with a second inner dock that was not tidal in use in 1851. Berths along the Itchen Keys also became available for use between 1875 and 1902. In 1890, Queen Victoria opened the Empress Dock and four dry docks were constructed, opening in 1846, 1847, 1854 and 1879, all making use of reclaimed land. But progress waits for no man, and as the size of ships increased, so did the need for more and bigger docks. The White Star Dock in the Eastern Docks was followed in the 1930s with the reclamation of Western Bay on the River Tess, which flowed hard against the old town walls. A massive operation involved the creation of a single quayside, more than two kilometres long, with 400 acres of associated reclaimed land. At the western end of this was the seventh dry dock, the King George V graving dock, which opened in July 1933. The new docks could accommodate the Queen Mary or the RMS Queen Elizabeth, the largest passenger ship to be built for 56 years. The new docks are now known as the Western Docks, and to the west of these, a container port was developed from 1969. The obsolete is never allowed to stand for long in Southampton Docks. This was the coaling plant. Something serving a more immediate need will replace it, or the space it occupied will go to add another acre or two to the industrial estate. Just as this spoil, being dredged from the bed of the river Test, to widen the main channel of the new docks will help to provide another 10 acres of space when it has filled in the now unused inner dock. One day, this may be the site of another industrial depot or factory, or provide space for some shipping line to raise a building to rival the modern dock offices. For future major extension of the docks, a large area of land owned by the Transport Docks Board is available westwards of number seven dry dock. Almost certainly King Canute was not a madman who thought he could control nature. When his orders were ignored, he pronounced, let all the world know that the power of kings is empty and worthless, and there is no king worthy of the name save him 
by whose will heaven and earth and sea obey external laws. This account shows Canute setting out to demonstrate to his courtiers that the tide would come in regardless of his own powers. Today citizens of Southampton still bear witness to the wisdom of King Canute when roads alongside the reclaimed land most years are flooded and traffic is diverted.